all of the marks of the fusion of those chromosomes predicted by common descent and evolution. All those marks are present on human chromosome number two. So the case is closed in a most beautiful way. And that is, the prediction of evolution of common ancestry is fulfilled by that lead pipe evidence that you see here in terms of tying everything together. That our chromosome, formed by the fusion from our common ancestor, is chromosome number two. Evolution has made a testable prediction, and it has passed. So modern genetics and molecular biology actually support evolutionary theory? They support it in great detail. And the closer we can get to looking at the details of the human genome, the more powerful that evidence has become. Darwin didn't even know about molecular biology and DNA, yet that's where some of the most profound evidence is, is being uncovered today. Think about that. That somebody in the 1800s made predictions that are being confirmed in molecular biology labs today. That's a very profound statement of a very successful theory. Not a single observation, not a single experimental result has ever emerged in 150 years that contradicts the general outlines of the theory of evolution. Any theory that can stand up to 150 years of contentious testing is a pretty darn good theory, and that's what evolution is. Och den djupare förståelsen av evolutionen, så som den framlagts av Darwin, har med genetikens hjälp gett nyckeln till många av livets hemligheter. It's an explanatory framework within which all the rest of biology fits. Right? It's something that we use uh, in practical biological applications. Medicine, agriculture, industry. When you're getting a flu vaccine, that really depended upon evolutionary knowledge. In many, many specific ways, evolution makes a practical difference. It's not just something that happened in the past, evolution's happening now. Evolutionen har alltså klarat denna granskning. Men hur är det med intelligent design? Följer den samma regler? If you invoke a non-natural cause, a spirit force or something like that in your research, I have no way to test it. So, supernatural causation is not considered part of science? Yeah. I hesitate to beg the patience of the court with this, but... Being a Boston Red Sox fan, I can't resist it. One might say, for example, that the reason the Boston Red Sox were able to come back from three games down against the New York Yankees was because God was tired of George Steinbrenner and wanted the Red Sox to win. In my part of the country, you'd be surprised how many people think that's a perfectly reasonable explanation for what happened last year. And you know what? It could be true. But it certainly wouldn't be science. It, it's not scientific. And it's certainly not something we can test. The fundamental problem with intelligent design is that you can't use it to explain the natural world. It's essentially a negative argument. It says evolution doesn't work, therefore the designer did it. Evolution doesn't work, therefore we win by default. But when you ask them, what does intelligent design tell you about nature? Uh, does it tell you uh, what the designer did? Does it tell you what the designer used to design something with? Does it tell you what purpose the designer had for designing something? Does it tell you when the designer did it? Why the designer did it? It doesn't tell you anything like that. Basically, it's a negative argument, and you can't build a science on a negative argument. After three weeks of evidence on wetenskapens beskaffenhet, with beläggen for evolution and bristerna in intelligent design, had the målsägarna nu framfört sin sak. To watch the whole thing, you got an education in what evolution was, where evolution stands as a theory now in the 21st century. If you concentrated, you would get sucked into this thing and the day would go by and you'd come out and you'd think, that was amazing what I heard here. And these eloquent people, you know, with these incredible educations and it was fantastic. The plaintiff's attorneys had put on an amazing case. But there was this idea, especially among those who weren't sitting in the trial every day, that when the defense started, you know, then we'll see some pretty interesting stuff too on the other side. Frågan var nu om försvaret kunde bevisa att intelligent design är en vetenskaplig teori. Dover, Pennsylvania. 
Liksom på många andra håll i USA är Dover delat. I personally don't believe in Darwin's theory of evolution. Saying that you don't believe in evolution is almost saying for us well we don't believe that the Civil War ever took place in the United States. Dover är splittrat mellan de som accepterar Charles Darwins evolutionsteori och de som avfärdar den. Sprickan mellan vetenskap och bibelord höll på att bli ödesdiger för stan. De första tecknen på motsättningar dök upp när en high school-elev målade människans utveckling från aplik förfader till homo sapiens. Det var en lovlig piece of art artistically and it did not offend me in any way. Men somliga i Dover tog anstöt av att människor och apor är besläktade. Målningen togs bort från klassrummet och förstördes. Lågorna spreds till den lokala skolstyrelsen. Styrelsen var upprörd över att skolorna enbart tog upp evolutionsteorin och det naturliga urvalet och krävde att eleverna skulle undervisas i en kontroversiell idé, intelligent design. To just talk about Darwin to the exclusion of anything else perpetrates a fraud. Intelligent design is a science stopper. It makes people stupid. Elva invånare i Dover stämde skolstyrelsen i syfte att hålla intelligent design utan förundervisningen. Nästan över en natt blev Dover första sidens stoff i tvisten om evolutionen. Trials tear communities apart. They set neighbor against neighbor. Nobody wants to do this. You do it when you have to. Dover var splittrat och en federal domstol skulle besluta om intelligent design var legitim vetenskap eller förklädd religion. Och utslaget skulle få konsekvenser som sträckte sig långt utanför klassrummen i Dover. It's about religion, politics and power. Are you prepared to open? Yes, I am. You may do so. Medan det hetade till i den federala domstolen hade stämningen i Dover gått från spänd till kuslig. Tammy Kitts Miller en av de målsägande som hade en dotter i nionde klass på Dover High School hade fått hotelsebrev. One letter was pretty disturbing. I think this was the one with the passage that um, the last sentence, especially Madeline Murray was found murdered for taking prayer and Bible reading out of the schools, so watch out for a bullet. Um, this was the letter that I made sure I, my lawyers got a copy of and it was forwarded to the FBI. Anywhere you turned, we were getting attacked. I mean, the pe- people in the community were attacking us in the newspapers, people in our own profession were attacking us, saying, you know, what are you guys doing in Dover? Why are you letting this happen? People in the community were calling us atheists, which was a bit offensive to two of us in the department because two of us happened to be sons and daughters of ministers. I fail to understand how teachers can call themselves Christians, go to church, talk about God, talk about Christ, and then go to school five days a week and talk about Darwin and teach it as if it's fact. Not a theory, but that's how it happened. I I don't understand that. To me, that's talking out of both sides of your mouth. After that, I've already one of them driven the Jude Bill Buckingham not oväntat. Med hänvisning till vacklande hälsa efter en operation avgick han från skolstyrelsen och flyttade från delstaten. Det var bara några månader innan valet till skolstyrelsen och åtta av nio platser skulle tillsättas. Intelligent design skulle sättas på både i vallokalen och i rättsalen. Naturkunskapsläraren Brian Ream, som redan hade flyttat till en annan skola, skulle ställa upp i valet. 